Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lines TV and today's video was brought to you by OneFootball and today OneFootball are doing something special from the 28th of August to the beginning of October OneFootball are offering a UEFA Champions League experience for you and two of your friends This includes flights, accommodation and match tickets to a group game of your choice This offer is only available to subscribers from the UK, Spain, Italy, Germany and France To have a chance of entering in this UEFA Champions League experience you need to do three things 1. Sign up in the app with email 2. Agree to terms and conditions then three, sign up. You guys definitely don't want to miss out on this offer. Go to the description to this video and click on the link to the OneFootball app. And once you guys have done all of that, I want to know in the comment section below, what game do you guys want to go to? Hi everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lines TV. And today I'm bringing a special guest, Marco Messina from Italian Football TV. Hey Marco. How you doing Nini? Yeah, I'm good man, not too bad. How's things over there? Everything's good. I got another Italian in the Premier League. More reason to watch. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, exactly. So if, if you guys don't know already, you know, what are you guys doing? Zappa Costa from Torino has allegedly agreed. Not allegedly, it seems that a £23 million fee has been agreed. He is going to be signing a four-year contract. He does play as a right wing back for Torino. He was one of the best right wing backs in Serie A last season. And Co Antonio Conte was actually the guy to give him his first Italian cap. So it looks like he's going to be coming to fight for a place with Victor Moses for the right wing back spot at Chelsea. And Marco, I just wanted to know, man, what's your thoughts on Zappa, on Zappa Costa? Because obviously uh, there's not much about him. I've been reading some things about him, uh, the second coming of Zambrotta, but I'm thinking that's a bit... <laughs> <laughs> they always crazy. have these kind of like uh, comparisons, you know, in Italy especially. Zappa Costa is a good player. Um, I mean, at Torino, uh, right wing back, right back. Like you said, Conte did give him his chance for Italy because he believes in him. And this guy, I'll be completely honest with you. He is such a Conte player. He's a hardworking player. Um, he doesn't stop running. He won't stop fighting for the jersey. Um, he's good. He's good. He's not incredible. He's not like an Alexandro, not a player like that. But he definitely brings um the thing that conte would want to a team you know like i think that a player like zapacosta loves to play under conte because with strict guidance and um you know following the rules and he's a player that's not going to cause you any problems um i think that he could do good he's in my opinion he's an he's an above average right back but under conte i really think that he can make him a solid player we saw what he did with victor moses and i think that uh this fits what conte would want so so it's a, it's a solid move all around yeah, sorry. Yeah, oh yeah, like I was saying before. Yeah, so we um we know that crossing is one of Zappa Costa's best strengths in his game. What other strengths would you say is part of his arsenal? Uh, he's a physical player. He's a he's a big guy and uh, 25 years old. I think that that he brings a lot to the table, especially physically for me. He's the type that's not going to stop running and Conte and especially in the Premier League, you need to be very physical. Uh, you know, it's a strong game. And uh, he, like I said, he's a Conte player. He's not going to stop fighting. He's a hard worker. And I think that he's going to give everything that you have, that he has on the pitch. You know, he's not the, the he's not like a Dani Alves. He's not incredibly skilled. But I think that when he lacks in that, he definitely um, increases in his work ethic. And uh, especially being under Conte, I think it's going to help him a lot. You know, just going somewhere, just going to the Premier League under another coach, it wouldn't happen. But we saw what Marcos Alonso, how Marcos Alonso did as a left back for Chelsea, yeah. you know, he was, I would say that Zappa Costa was above Marco Salanzo in the Serie A. So um, I think that says it all. And a lot of Chelsea fans were not happy with Marco Salanzo. Um, I scored his, his free kick that he scored the other day for you guys. That was beautiful. Um, and I think that uh, what Conte did with Marco Salanzo, making him a similar type player for, for Zappa Costa. Okay, that's really interesting. Now, we know not too long ago, another right back left Serena, and he was Matteo Damian, who joined Manchester United. Are there any similarities in the players, or are they complete polar opposites? I, I, I actually like Zappa Costa a little bit better. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Damian, especially for the national team. I don't know how he's been doing, actually, at Manchester United. I haven't followed it, him closely enough. But I think that um, Zappa Costa has a little bit more potential in his game than Darmian does. I think Darmian's a little bit more predictable, in my opinion at least. And I think that Zappa Costa, 
we still haven't seen Zapacosta, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. we, we saw him at Torino and, you know, very good team. Mihalovic is a great coach at Torino. But under Conte, players explode. And players like him explode. You know, he's going to be a very solid guy. He's not going to be unbelievable. He's not going to be crazy. But he's going to be a guy that you can rely on. And it, Conte is going to make him into a better player than he is right now. Okay, that seems interesting. Because like Chelsea, we have a history of signing similar types of players like this who are very reliable and you can yeah. count on them. But if anything, what are some of the weaknesses in his game? Now, you said that he is a, an above average player. So that means he has some limitations. And what is that? Is that in terms of his one-on-one -on -one dribbling or one-on-one -on -one defending or his composure in possession? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Zapacosta, the thing is, I remember maybe like a year or two ago, he was a little bit more talked about. You know, Juventus were interested, a few other top teams. And ever since then, there's been some other Italian fullbacks who have leaped him a little bit, like Andrea Conti, for example, a little bit younger, um, exploded a lot more than, than they did on Torino. And Torino as a whole, their whole defense wasn't great. So maybe that plays into part of it. You know, they, they leaked a lot of goals last season and maybe he just didn't fit completely in that line because as a unit, they weren't looking great. And he just never elevated to the next level, in my opinion. Still, he's a good player, but just not that extra, I don't know what, yeah. to, I don't know what it is, but you, I think you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Now, I'm just curious too, this is just personally for me, how did Torino like to use their wing backs? Because obviously when you use wing backs, they're very important for the system. Did they have license to roam forwards whenever they wanted, or were they really disciplined and had to, you know, moderate how many times they could get forwards? Uh, Mihailovic, if you don't know, he's an attacking-minded coach. Uh, Torino is one of the highest-scoring teams. Like you said, with Andrea Bellotti, though, you know, any team will be a high-scoring team. Um, and Zapacosta, yeah, definitely going up wide was important because of their front three that they have. So the fullbacks definitely needed to help out and, and have a little bit more freedom in their movements. And I think Mihailovic is similar to Conte in that they're both what we say in Italy, hammers. Like they're very tough on their players. They want certain things. They demand a lot. So I think actually he could transition over a little bit better because he understands the type of coach and he's worked under Conte before. And yeah, so they did have a little bit, not freedom, I would say, because Mihalovic likes to keep a, a straight reign, but they did move up uh, going forward a little bit. And I think, are you guys still playing um, a three-man back line? Yeah, we are. Okay, so it's between him and Victor Moses on that right wing back. And I think that's even better because the competition, they're both two hardworking players. And um, it's going to make things even better for you guys. And I hope, personally, that Zavo Costa does break uh, into that starting lineup, of course, being the Italian. And I think that it's going to be interesting to see what he does um, along with uh, Antonio Conte. I think he's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's really interesting. And just the last point I wanted to know, but actually it's two more. Basically, there was one ex-Torino wingback that I used to really like, Bruno Perez. I know that he's gone to Roma. How would you yeah. compare Zappa Costa to him? Uh, Bruno Perez, he started out as a beast after leaving Torino to go to Roma. And since he's really fell off, he seemed extremely glamorous. I mean, he scored this wonder goal against Juventus, and you guys could YouTube yeah, this one. Sort of. um, mm -hmm. I mean, unreal. He's got incredible skill, you know, that Brazilian left back type thing that, yeah. that you come to expect. <laughs> Uh, so Zabacos is not the same. He's not the same kind of player. You're not going to see that kind of flashiness from him. He's more of the hardworking side. And maybe that's not as exciting as a fan who's just watching right now. You know, you love to see the guy go forward. But it's proved that Roma kind of have a left back problem with uh, Bruno Perez. I mean, a right back problem, left back problem yeah. with Bruno Perez. Because sometimes he does do too much. And it seems like he's very skilled. But again, he does that extra thing too much, loses the ball constantly. And for yeah. Roma, he's he's kind of fallen out, to be honest. Imagine, I know I know he's not going to come now, but he's the type of player I always felt managers like Conte do really well at like helping them get their discipline and helping them focus. You know what I mean? But you know, it, it would have I would have personally found it exciting if we went for a bid for him purely because I like how the guy gets forward. He's a beast. He's a yeah, type. but you don't want him. <laughs> yeah, <I can't, laughs> just I can't to be imagine. fair, he's not. I don't think he's the type that Conte would would really. Maybe he would, but. I think Zabo Costa is more of a Conte player. As it does, it's, again, it's not as glamorous as a Bruno Perez because you like yeah, to YouTube these players and then you see this goal and you're like, oh my God, yeah, he's going to no, do no. that against Manchester United and stuff. But yeah, uh, but I, I think Zabo Costa is more solid. He fits Conte's bill a lot better than a guy like Bruno Perez was. Okay, last point I want to know is with Zabo Costa, is he someone that's comfortable pushing up forwards by himself in terms of running with the ball or does he need someone out wide to come up with him so he can get forwards. That's a 
that's an interesting question. Um, I'm not sure if I have an answer for you, just because I feel like I just be, I, you know, I, I can't think of it at the moment. I can't remember it. Yeah. Um, I think that he does need support. He's not going to do it all on his own. He's not the oh, type yeah. of player that's going to just, you know, be a bull and run through everyone. He's going to play it back sometimes. He's going to be disciplined. He's going to try not to lose the ball and he's going to be contained in the beginning. But I think that, um, again, it, it's all about Conte on this one. I think that um, Conte has proven time and time again as a manager for Chelsea, for Juventus, for Italy, that he's always underrated. His transfers and his call-ups have always been so questionable and fans were not happy and journalists were not happy. But at the end of the day, Conte was almost always right with his transfers. And I think that this is just one that... Um, I know it does come on transfer deadline day, and he definitely wasn't the first objective of Chelsea. But I think that uh, maybe trust Conte. Okay, okay, because I know Conte has a history of liking that particular title wing back. Obviously, when he was at Juventus, he had was uh, Peluso and uh, the other guy, De, De Skidley. Yeah, Lichtsteiner yeah, was there too, but the other backup one on the left, what was his name? This is name. On the De, left. De, De Skidley or something, I can't pronounce it. What, De Schilio? I think so. Yeah, he's at he's at Juventus now, uh, but he's had a few type of players. He's had like Esti Garibia. He's had a few types at Juventus, all different, but all with that same Aceras core. Yeah. Cas it is all with the same core of being very very hardworking and disciplined. So is that because the fits that bill? Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting because yes, yeah, it's a bit of a sign up because I was of the belief that obviously we got a back five. If there was a time where Moses couldn't play, I always thought could Aspi not just fulfill that role? And I'm trying to find out what really differentiates. Uh, Aspi Laqueta and Zappa Costa, but um, of course Zappa Costa has been playing in a Torino, you know, as a wingback for Torino. So of course, it seems like he is better attacking compared to an Aspi, especially his crosses in the box too. So again, it'll be very good competition to have at Chelsea, and yeah, it looks like it's going to be finalised by today. It literally came out from the blue, but it's, it's typical Chelsea, you know, we work on 